How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays, 6 p.m. Eastern with me. I'm here. What a wild week in professional wrestling. I say this every single week that we do the show. I, 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 you know, at one point I thought I was, it was a little bit of a cliche for me to say it every week, but I mean, it's the truth. <laughs> we started the show last week. We had John Alba on last week, had a blast with John Alba. We had so much to talk about this week, more insanity, more speculation, more possibilities of a sale. We're going to talk about all of this and a whole lot more. Joining me right after the break, Dave Meltzer from the Wrestling Observer website, Wrestling Observer Newsletter. He's going to be joining me to break this down for a segment or two. Stephanie McMahon resigned. I mean, that's a big story. Not only did she leave as CEO, as co-CEO, she resigned. She also resigned from the board. And here comes Vince. Then immediately, the speculation regarding a sale broke Twitter and all of social media on Tuesday night. A lot of people waiting for the news to drop overnight did not happen. But more information coming out regarding who the possible suitors would be, what's the best fit for this company, who would come in, and why they would want to sell it. I think we're all leaning towards, we understand why they're going to sell it and why going private maybe makes a little bit more sense than a company like Disney buying them. Cannot imagine Vince McMahon being in any position of power if that was the case, if a Disney bought him or an Amazon bought him. But the possibilities of an Endeavor or a private equity group or even the Saudis purchasing them kind of adds more to that Vince McMahon coming back and gaining control. We got all this and a whole lot more to break down here on the show. Also, Rampage. Holy moly, what a street fight that was. So everybody, you know, people got a little worked up over that. Was it too much? A little too much blood? I don't know. We're going to find that out and a whole lot more. Dave Meltzer joining me right after the break. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. Happy Sunday, everybody. A lot of football going on today. Somebody on Twitter, uh, Twitter, Twitter asked me, <laughs> how can we do a show now? On Sunday, I'm like, I do a show every Sunday, dude. Joining me now, the one, the only, Mr. Dave Meltzer. How you doing, Dave? It's been a very interesting week. Um, <laughs> that's what I would say. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, very interesting week. You know, every week I started the show saying how every week I've been saying, wow, this is a big week for wrestling news. And you know what? Rightfully so. It's been a big week for wrestling news every single week, especially uh, this week with Stephanie McMahon resigning as co-CEO and uh, chairwoman of the board, opening the spot for Vince to come in as executive chairman, stepping down as CEO, and then the sale rumors started. So I, I, I want to pick your brain on this because you've experienced essentially everything in the modern era of professional wrestling, especially on the WWE side. You know, you, you were there when they went public. You were there for everything. Uh, so who better than you to talk about this with me? Stephanie resigning was not a surprise to me, but it was a surprise that she stepped down from the board. I would say Stephanie resigning was a surprise. Stephanie taking time off would not have been a surprise. But doing it right now, I would say, when it happened was a surprise because, I mean, they literally had just said on Friday that there's going to be no management changes and management's going to be exactly how it is. And she was one of the ones, I mean, and maybe even the key one, saying that to the employees, like there's not going to be any changes. And then a couple of days later, she's gone. And then they announce, you know, that Vince has been voted as head of the board of directors unanimously, you know, just shortly after they had voted unanimously not to let him back. So, um, you know, it, it, it was a, um, I mean, I guess like when you look in hindsight, because Vince had all the voting shares that, he had a lot of uh, he had a lot of power that he could exercise, and he absolutely did. And uh, there we are. But I mean, so Nick, Nick Khan is in theory running the place, but you know we're all sitting here going like, how long is that going to last? You know, I mean, everything. You know, you get told something on a Monday, and then you know by Friday, so so much has changed. Yeah. Um, so last week, for people to summarize this, last week Vince appointed himself chairman of the board. Employees were informed 
No leadership changes, like you said. I believe that was last Friday. JP Morgan was hired to facilitate a sale for a potential buyer. You know, a lot of questions as to why JP Morgan is involved with this. I know JP Morgan does have dealings in Saudi Arabia, but from from what I was told from people that I you know that I speak to at, at Morgan and and, uh, and and Goldman Sachs, I believe Morgan Stanley holds Vince's margins. So it would be a per, it would be a conflict of interest. So JP Morgan would have to be uh, the the bank essentially that's facilitating or helping facilitate a sale because there's not too many other large banks that could handle a sale on this level. I guess that's the situation. I mean, you you would know more about that aspect than me. I just remember when the UFC was sold, there was a it was a similar situation, you know, where somebody was there taking the bids and things like that, and that's what I think that you know and getting the word out, sending the prospectuses out to potential buyers as to what you're buying and the, the business numbers and things like that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't remember if J.P. Morgan was involved in it, but I do remember that, that it was a similar, you know, that was similar. Yeah. So on Tuesday, Stephanie announced her resignation. Uh, I, I, when, I, when, I, when I first, in the beginning of the segment, I said, you know, I, I'm not surprised that she's, I, I, I'm not surprised that she stepped down as co-CEO, uh, I when when she had stepped down when she had left the first time for a, a leave of absence, I, I you know the way they handled this was so negative, uh, and, and the burial began and it was straight from W I mean straight from WWE. It wasn't that it was rumors and it was hearsay of people you know saying like well you know I worked for Steph she wasn't great. This came from a high level, where you know they they made sure that. She was almost untouchable. You didn't want to deal with her. And then all of a sudden, she's back two weeks later. Now she's out, not, not done the same way. She exited very, you know, uh, it was a positive exit, I guess, publicly, however yeah. you want to put it. Yeah. Then the speculation began of the sale. Do, do you know well, where I mean, this... the, the, the speculation of the sale actually began, um, you know, well before her resignation. Yes. I mean, we, we, we all... You know, we all knew that, um, you know, I mean, Vince basically used the sale to come back because if he had come back without the sale talk, the stock price would have gone down. And then, you know, that would have been their reason for, you know, not being, you know, not wanting him back. Is, it, is the stock price going to tank? But when he went in there and talked about a sale, the stock price goes up and they can't say, well, it's not in the shareholder's best interest because the stock, the stock price is up. So, you know, they were looking at and there's still one lawsuit out there already, you know, basically saying, you know, for, against them for bringing Vince back, but I mean, the only, you know, from a, from a shareholder perspective, but the only way that that's going to mean anything financially is if the stock price goes down and as long as they are in the, the you know, as long as they're about to sell, um, the stock price is not going to go down to below the level it was when Vince came back. Yeah. And especially considering the rumors are that, you know, the, the sale purchase price would be anywhere from 102 to $108 per share. If you're an, if you're an investor, that's positive for you right now because they're you exactly. know that's more than what you what you went in at. So he, here's what I want to ask you. So Tuesday night, I, I, I'm sure you had the same scenarios as much as everybody else that that covers this. My phone started exploding with, "Are they selling to the Saudis?" Absolutely. Uh, yep. It was it got so muddied where I you know when I tried to confirm this, I reached out to people at WWE. I reached out to people within the finance world that would maybe have a clue. And it became so muddied within, I want to say, an hour where it was almost impossible for me to verify anything. Um, do, do you know how, where this all began? Uh, and, and obviously, we all spoke to multiple people and everybody's had the same idea that this was happening. Uh, I just don't know where it began and, or how it began to spread so fast. Um, well, I mean, what happened is, is when you hear something so shocking, you know, I think that what happens is, is that everybody talks about it and everyone in wrestling, and then it, you hear from a bunch of different, you know, yeah, I was hearing from, you know, um, over and over and over all night long from everybody, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but, but nobody confirmed it, although, you know, one, one reporter confirmed it, but it was like, I know that I couldn't confirm it, and I asked around, and it felt early, but it didn't feel like, as far as like the the Saudis being the ones buying it, that didn't feel wrong, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And they still may. I mean, that actually made sense at a lot of levels, which is one of the reasons that we all talked about it. But you know, it did feel like, wait a minute, if they were just put on sale and they just hired J.P. Morgan, it's probably you know we're probably really not talking about a sale for months. But could they have been the front runner? And could you know? I mean, time will tell on this story. 
But, um, yeah, it, it was crazy. And then um, the next morning they denied it. And, um, you know, the sale was done. And, I mean, I didn't expect that the sale was done. And we, But we still, you know, I mean, that still may be where it ends up. I, you know, I, I'm still leaning towards that just for uh, what makes the most sense reasoning, right? I, I, I can't see Disney being it. I know that the, the story came out that Nick Khan was at a football game with, you know, Bob Eigner and the president of ESPN. Uh, I know that that came out early in the week or, or I think on t- Wednesday that story came out. But There's, um, yeah, when, when, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday. Yeah, yeah cause uh, but, that, actually, that actually came from me. But that's like. You know, I mean, like, that's because he knows everybody. He knows everybody. So he's a very connected he guy in sports media. Talk, right, right. He's going to talk to everybody. That doesn't mean that they're that they sat there and talked about a sale, but it, it could have meant that there was discussion. But it was more of an example of, you know, I mean, he was not at Raw. He went to the national championship game, but that's Nick Khan. He's a big sports guy. Met with the top sports people. Um, you know, it may have come up in some form, you know, as far as, I mean, probably, you know, in, in you know, People, I'm sure people were talking to him. I'm sure everybody was asking him about it, right? You know, that, that knows him. He's like, hey, what's going on here? So, um, but, you know, I mean, as far as like the, you know, there's a bunch of people who could take it. There's, um, and, and reasons for all of them. I think Comcast, I, I always feel Comcast is the best fit um, for a lot because they, they house Peacock, they house USA. Um, but, you know, I mean, Endeavor certainly would want it. Um, it would be a harder thing. I mean, the cons, I, I don't really, um, and we're talking Tony and, Ch- and Chad. I mean, it's like, you'd never say no, but I just feel that would be a hard one for Vince to sell to. I agree with you. Dave, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, I do want to talk about the cons and possibly some other people that would be interested in purchasing WWE. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here. Joining me, Dave Meltzer from the Wrestling Observer website, Wrestling Observer newsletter. Dave, I think I am approaching. No, it has to be over twenty years that I've been reading the Wrestling Observer at this point. Wow, wow, wow! Awesome. I wasn't paying. I had a, I had a friend's uncle that would that would that would kind of slip me. You know, he would like print it out for me and slip it to me when I was a kid. But you know yeah. what? I've been paying for for uh, over a decade. Two decades yeah. almost now at this point. Uh, yeah. So let's go into this a little bit more here. So we were speculating on, you know, the, the report came out that uh, that the Saudis in principle had agreed on this. Uh, I think a lot of people, including myself, lean towards WWE going private for numerous reasons. One being, you know, Vince coming back to sell the company is the big question here. Normally, a publicly traded company that's making the money that they're making they're a well-oiled machine. These guys are are making tons of money. They're making tons of money on the TV rights deal. They have a great international deal with Saudi Arabia that's paying them. Uh, it's a billion-dollar deal over 10 years. So you have to ask, why would they sell it? A- and for me, and I want to find out what you lean to, I'm thinking, A, does, does Vince feel that the TV rights negotiations are not going to go as well as they did previously? And that's why maybe he wants to get ahead of this and sell it. Or two, does he really want to remain in full power? And the the only option he really has for this happening is that he comes in with the idea that they're going to sell. They attempt to sell and maybe they don't, maybe they do. But if they do, it's someone that put, keeps them there. I think both are really viable stories. Um, you know, there is, you know, because of the whole, you know, the whole media landscape situation being so uncertain, you know the the expectation of a giant rise in in the uh, rights fees that was there very recently is is less certain, but it still could happen. But I mean, as far as the selling, I think the feeling is that um, you know maybe it's 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 something to sell that they could get billions and billions. You know, I mean, like look, I mean, I remember in 2016 when UFC sold for four billion. I mean, I heard from people in WWE. We you know if we could sell for that much. We're going to sell. That's four billion dollars. Now, of course, the stock price changed greatly since that point. But, um, you know, and Vince doesn't need the money. He's got all the money in the world. So it could be something where if, um, you know, if somebody sells and promises to keep him in power, um, then that's, you know, that's that's the thing. No one's going to, you know, like, but that, that would be going, you know, that would have to be going private. So that would rule out a Comcast or a Disney, you know, but, yeah. but, 
But Comcast, as we mentioned before, Comcast makes the most sense if you're going to sell. I don't know if they would offer the most money, but they might. But they have the most they have the most to gain from owning it because they're the ones who are going to be paying the bulk of those rights fees um, if they want to keep basically if they want to keep USA Network from collapsing because USA Network collapses without without WWE. Yeah, uh, a very different story from a, even even five six years ago for the, for USA Network. You know, five Complete. six years ago they had suits and they had all these. You know, uh, you know their their entire thing was their drama lineup, which was fantastic. And now it's a SVU marathon. You know, it's a Law and Order marathon channel, which a lot of cable is now. So with with, I mean Comcast, what, I think one hundred and sixty three billion dollars they have to to be able to spend on this. Uh, the, the funny story here, and, and this is the least likely, but I, I got such a kick out of this that Barron's was reporting that the cons may be in, involved in a purchase of WWE and, uh, you know, media, you know, mainstream media kind of thought this was hysterical that a competitor would buy them. Uh, the likelihood of that happening, Dave, very slim, right? You know, I mean, it's like, it, it makes sense in, a, in, 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 as far as from the con standpoint, but, um, yeah, I, I would say, you know, I don't want to say nothing, you know what I mean? But um, I think it would be difficult, number one. I mean, it's funny. It's funny to say, like, you know, because of all the money that the cons have going, like, they don't have enough money for this because this purchase price is so high. But, you know, them, you know, I mean, it, it, it's like if they partner with other people. And, again, with the UFC, you know, you know um, Endeavor partnered with a bunch of, you know, firms, you know, and – it could be something where a bunch of people, you know, and probably will unless it's Comcast or, or Disney. It, it may be, you know, a bunch of people working together. And if they could go in there and Tony, you know, you know, they put up some money and they get other people who they know and they certainly know enough, enough people in business and, and pitch it and go, look, this thing it can make us hundreds of millions of dollars a year in profit if we buy it. And um, so with that one, um, you know, I could see where Tony, loved, being someone who loves wrestling, I could see him absolutely wanting it um, and having the connections to possibly raise that money. I mean, it's not, it's not like an a unbelievable scenario to me. I mean, is it, do I expect it to happen? Probably not. Yeah. Uh, do, do, you know, I got this question a lot from people, but, and, I wanted to, and I saved it for the show, but if the Saudis were to purchase this, would this negatively in affect TV, the TV deal? Would they... They would most likely have to have the TV deal in place before this happens. How do you assure? Well, I mean, from what I gather, they want the sale done before they negotiate the TV rights because um, the t with people knowing that there's a sale, you know, you're, you know, people may not want to, you know, they, they're, they're, the uncertainty over who owns it would impact the TV rights. Like, um, you know, just does if Fox thinks. That just as an example, Fox thinks that that Comcast is getting it. Um, they don't want to bid for something that Comcast is going to own and then take away from them. You know, so it it it. Um, well, I mean, will the Saudi thing affect the deal? Um, I mean, it it could. I mean, it could, um, which would make it like a you know not the best fit. But it's not necessarily that it will. Um, I mean, Live Golf, you know, has not gotten a TV deal. But a lot of people do business with the Saudis that have TV deals, you know, and, and they're, they're in sports. And, you know, the people who, the, you know, the, like, like the Newcastle team, Newcastle United, um, it's not like anyone's running away from doing business with them. You know, I mean, in the sports that they're in, the people are still doing business, the fans are still coming. So, I mean, that scenario of, like, no one's going to do business with them at that point, um, it hasn't happened, but this country is different from that country, and um, it it would it would make it uncertain. That's why I think where everybody was panicking over it, it's like it, of all the choices, it's the most controversial choice. But it might be Vince's best choice, and then there's the question of, you know, um, will Vince do the wrong thing for long term company um, to make himself, you know, you know, lock himself in power until he dies. And uh, he might, yeah. yeah. Very interesting stuff. I mean, how this is breaking down here. Uh, I, I had. I, I want to move on to another story here with the UFC stripping uh, Nganu from the heavyweight title. This this came out of nowhere, and I'm shocked to see John Jones returning in in a in a top level like this. Uh, so essentially, the contract negotiation fell apart. 
Um, I think that I think the obvious thing is they want, they've been wanting to put together John Jones and Nagano, and they finally signed John Jones to an eight fight deal. I don't know what that cost, but John Jones was asking a lot of money. Then they went to you know Nagano, and the claim is is that they offered him more than any heavyweight in history. Um, that would be eight million for for a fight by, that Brock did in his last fight. Wow. And I mean, um, but Nagano may believe that he's got this Tyson Fury boxing match where he can make much much more because he's been wanting to be a free agent. Um, so, I mean, I could see him doing the boxing match, making a lot of money, and then wanting to come back. I don't see where he can make that kind of money in, you know, in bare-knuckle boxing or Bellator. It's like it economically makes no sense to those organizations to offer that kind of money to uh, Francis Nagano. They can't recoup it in any way, shape, or form. So, um, I mean, that's a scenario that I could see. You know, one boxing match probably gets loses, probably hurts his value to a degree, then wants to come back, and then... Um, you know, fight John Jones, you know, because that fight, that's a big fight. That's a huge fight. But, you know, he's not that young. He's 36 years old right now. I know. You know? That's, why, and, that's, and that's quite a risk. Why, that's one of the reasons why he wants that money now, because I think he knows that, like, his time is, is running down, and if he can get big, big money fighting, um, you know, in a boxing match, you know, the, the, the person who everyone sees is the UFC heavyweight champion against the boxing world heavyweight champion, I mean, there was a time where, where if, if something like that existed years ago, it would be the giant of all giant things. But, you know, post-McGregor Mayweather and things like that, I, I think people realize that all of these fighting sports are, are specific. And the idea that, oh, badass knockout artist in UFC doesn't mean badass, badass knockout artist in boxing. And, in fact, you know, I mean, look, you know, a pure boxer is going to beat a non-boxer, even if the non-boxer, yeah. it's really hard. Always. I mean, yeah, unless you know, it's a fluke somewhere, but generally always that's the case. Right, right, right. You know, it's just, it, look, at, look at Jake Paul, you know, with these MMA champions. You know what I mean? He's, you know, yes, he's younger and some of them are smaller and everything like that. But he's a boxer. They're not a boxer, even though, um, you know, like, can Tyron Ridley hit hard? Yeah, he can hit hard. Can Anderson Silva hit hard? Yeah, Anderson Silva's, you know, a great striker, but it's like it's a different game, and, and you're, they're playing his game. And, uh, I mean, I heard Jake Paul throwing something in, but, um, and, and, you know, that one, that one has some intrigue only because Nagano is already is so much bigger than Jake Paul in under boxing rules and under MMA rules. I mean, he could destroy him. I don't even know if you could sanction the thing, um, but, you know, that's another one. Um, but, you know, again, it, it, it would do business, but I don't think it would do business to, to um, justify, you know, $10, $15 million for the guy. Boxing, I don't think, I don't know that if it would, but I think the boxing promoters are used to um, paying giant purses. So, you know, more than, more than um, MMA promoters are. Yeah, but it would have to be, it would have to be a gimmick fight like a Jake Paul, right? It, it, it can't be a, a, a heavyweight boxing champion level fighter fighting. I mean, I would, I would think that that's a really dumb move no matter how good your stand-up game is. Well, he's looking for money, and so, I mean, the, the, the fight is Tyson Fury. That's the fight that they want. My gosh. Um, and I, 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 don't, I can't imagine he has a chance. Uh, almost, yeah, almost no chance. I would, I would think yeah. the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Dave, thank you for coming on, as always. Very much appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Guys, okay. we're going to a quick break. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live. Sunday edition. That was great to have Dave on. Who better than Dave to talk about this? A lot of moving parts with this story. Listen, I, I know we spent some time on the on the sale possibility and what the future of Vince McMahon and WWE holds, but you know, there's a couple questions that got sent my way, and I kind of want to talk about it. Uh, a bunch of guys were asking, well, how soon till he dips into creative? Is he going to be involved with creative? Is he the head of creative? I. This is my personal belief, but if he's running that show, right, he's in there, he's the chairman of the board, executive chairman of the board, the most powerful man in that company. Yeah, Nick Khan's a CEO and Hunter's uh, creative, but it's Vince McMahon's company still. I mean, more than ever. I mean, not uh, as more than more than six months ago, more than a week ago. It, it, I cannot allow myself to even a remote second of thinking that Vince is not going to have his hands on what's happening on television. How can he not? If he sees something that they're doing that he's not a fan of, or someone is getting a push, or someone's using verbiage that he doesn't like, 
I can't imagine he's just going to say, well, this isn't my department anymore and just walk away. I, I don't know any business owner or, or CEO or chairman of the board that does that. Every aspect of the company is important. That's how you see this. Even the little things are important. And if there's something that, that is happening publicly, like a television show, and you are against it, I, I can't imagine he's going to sit back and say, well, Hunter, this is your problem, not mine. I got a company to sell. I know that a lot of people want that. I know a lot of people think that's what's going to happen, that he's just stepping back and Hunter's going to do everything. But I, I, I can't see it that way. MG, our producer, Matt. You see that you what do you do you agree with me on this? Am I wrong here to to think that he he will be hands on with everything? I think he'll look for opportunities maybe to to bleed his way in here and there. Um I think if it happens it won't be overnight. I think he's going to look like maybe maybe Triple H can't make TV and all of a sudden Vince shows up. And then we hear, you know, or or listen it's I, something as simple as Something as simple as uh, we're planning on Cody's winning the Rumble. And he gets up that day and he says no. Cody's or Cody's going to beat beat you know uh, Roman for the title, and he says no, not not yet. We can't do it yet before a sale. I I'm not saying that I have any information on this. Just I'm going based on this man's forty some odd year track record that I've watched on television. Yeah, you know, uh, it's an illusion. Fine, you you could you could say that all you want. By the way, I do want Cody to win the title, and I want Cody to be super successful. And I I I don't know what the plan will be to get the title off of Roman, but whatever it is, I hope it's positive. And I hope Hunter has a chance here to kind of show what he could really do. Well, one thing to uh, to think about here is they've already probably have most of the mania plan. Of course, everything has so, to be wrapped. I mean, so, listen, the Dwayne yeah. stuff is still still in limbo, right? Uh, as far as we know, and, and the official mm -hmm. WWE comment, whenever you ask them, will be always the same exact line: "If he wants to do it, if The Rock wants to be here, he will be here." It's an open door policy. It doesn't matter when it is, when you when he wants to, he will do it. I think if Vince wanted to, he might jump in after Mania. Then we got to really start thinking because then or, there are going to be new plans. Yeah, or Vince, Vince, uh, you know, a positive here. Maybe Vince could negotiate that that The Rock shows up, you know, if he was if he was kind of on the fence. There are a lot of people that only, only want to work with Vince. I mean, that, and that's still true. We said this a couple of weeks ago when Vince was out. And we were saying, you know, how does this affect a guy like The Rock or a guy like Steve Austin coming back or a Bill Goldberg or a Brock Lesnar? You know, negotiating with these guys, it's it's been very hands-on for Vince, especially a guy like Brock. A lot of this is moving parts, guys. You know, it, we're going to have to unfortunately let it play out. And I know we hate to do that here. We love to speculate. We like to have fun, but you got to let it play out. AW Dynamite ratings. I want to talk about this a little bit because I thought this was a very good Dynamite. The show was up 11, uh, almost 12% here, 967,000 viewers, just shy of a million there. The highlight included the Elite winning the Trios title in a great ladder match. MJF cut a promo on everybody. What did you think? That MJF promo, guys, would you, I, I, was, I saw so much negativity about his promo ability and him as champion. I guess the honeymoon's over there. A lot of people were, said it's the same old, same old MJF promo. Well, yeah, he's a heel. A lot of people were upset over the things that he was saying. I think that's what he's trying to achieve. You know, we've gotten into this era of, of cool heels. Since 1996, we've been cheering for all the heels on TV. If you're a great heel, if you're a successful heel, we will cheer for you. That is how it's happened. And MJF is doing some really good work. Listen, do, do, I, do I see, you know, would I like to see him wrestle more? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, but this is his style of promo. This is what he cuts. This is what he does. I I was I was actually surprised at the negativity there. And Danielson defeated uh, Takeshita in a in a fantastic match. That dude is fantastic. He's great. I hope he does more. 
SmackDown results here. Intercontinental champion Gunther defeated Braun Strowman to retain the title. 17 minutes, 29 seconds. They gave this a lot of time. Karrion Cross came out, attacked Rey Mysterio. Attacking him because he can't. You know, his son doesn't like him. Nobody likes him. He can't beat his son. Bray Wyatt came out and cut a promo. He's the eater of worlds. Uncle Howdy and him. Uh, he's Bray Wyatt. All right, cool. It felt a lot more like the old Bray there, right, MG? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it, it, he did it in the rocking chair, and it just, it looked like maybe they're leading back down that road, like Uncle Howdy fixed me type thing. And now I'm, now I'm back to what I used to do. I don't know what they're doing here. Well, maybe. I don't, <laughs> I don't either, know. but I mean, I hope there's an end soon because it just seems like this ever winding path when it comes to Bray Wyatt. There's Bray, there's the Fiend, there's still, they, they, yeah. there was a QR code that took you to the Firefly Funhouse. Essentially, where he said he's in hell. And then he, he kind of drifted in and out of being the fiend. Alexa Bliss is involved in this somehow. She's possessed. Mind games happening. So they, they're running. A, I mean, there's a, there's a multi-layered storyline here. We'll see where it goes. Kevin Owens defeated Sami Zayn via DQ. I thought this match was great. Adding more deception between the bloodline and Sami. Early in the night, Paul Heyman told Sammy that Roman wanted him to do this on his own with no bloodline, and the bloodline interfered in the finish, even though Sammy had the upper hand. Sammy seemed very conflicted at the end of the show, and he was, you know, he, he ended up celebrating. But that's the beginning. You know, the rumor was that the match at Elimination Chamber would be Sammy and Roman. They're kind of doing a good job at convincing us that that's the direction they're going to be headed here. Hey, on AEW Dynamite, I didn't talk about this, but Mercedes Monet did not show up. MG, you think she's going to show up eventually, or you think this was a big, uh, a big? I guess uh, everybody got in their head that she's going to show up and didn't happen. I think if she shows up, it's going to be on her terms. I don't think. Uh, I personally don't think she's signing any contracts, and I think she's going to do the loop and and just take. Um, as many dates as she can um, for, as a freelancer. So I don't know, man. Down the road. Yeah, I, down I, the road, I, maybe, I, but... You know, I would have said that the internet d did what the internet does by convincing ourselves that this is happening. However, you know, AEW leaned into this. They gave it a month. They promoted this for one month. They didn't really need hurt. to promote much because the show was going to do well anyway. It's in L.A. You also had the it was final her own match. Detriment, I think. I think it was her own detriment. Okay, that you would didn't. say, you know what? They messed up. That was a boo boo. But Britt Baker doing the wink and the nod and calling herself the boss, um, you you set it up for the debut. So if she's not going to show up, I mean, it does make sense now for you know Sheeta to go over to the other side and have some sort of trios match, a three on three, and here she comes with her, you know, WWE team essentially between Paige and Tony <laughs> and her now I, I mean they could still do it I, I'm still letting this play out um, and then on Rampage maybe it's Revolution maybe it's Revolution where she shows up I mean that's a big pay-per-view buy right people would be very yep. interested mm -hmm. in that if she showed up over there I mean that would be one of the only place I would say that it could happen I mean Battle in the Valley IWGP Women's Championship Kyrie and Mercedes Monet that's February 18th you have that happening. Already a sold-out show. IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Okada or Takagi will defend the title. Eddie Kingston versus Jay White. <laughs> Looking forward to that. And a filthy rules match. Filthy Tom Lawler and Homicide. Catalyst Wrestling's Homicide will be in action. Love that. Do you know I what actually, that is? I'm super into that what, match. What is it? Tell do me. Do you know what that, the rules are? It's no, no what is it? No it's ropes. Just no ropes. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Love it. I'm into that, dude. I'm into it big time. Very interesting time for professional wrestling right now. Uh, before we go to break, I want to get your opinion. What did you think of Ruby Soho bleeding everywhere in this match? Ruby and Willow uh, Nightingale defeated Ty Mello and Anna Jay in a street fight. This was almost like a week or so anniversary, year, yearly anniversary away from the last time there was this bloody women's match on AEW TV. They did it at New Year's, uh, the, their New Year's show last year. Was it too much, in your opinion? 
Um, I, I, I think it probably was, but I don't think that was the intent. I think uh, Ruby got herself a little too, uh, too much with whatever she used or whatever they did, and that led to that. Because I mean, that I don't know what you thought and what everybody else thinks, but that was probably the most blood I can remember seeing since, uh, um, the Dustin Rhodes in that Double or Nothing match with Cody. Yeah, dude. You know, like I. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the overuse of blood, personally. I'm not a big fan of, like, a hardcore match. Like, I don't like the the backstage brawls and the street fights, but I could appreciate it when when it's, like, a good one. I This was a lot of blood, for sure, but I didn't think it was... You know, was it was it too much? Yeah, but it didn't really affect me. Like, I, I it didn't bother me to the point to go public and be like, I hated this, like a lot of people did. Right. You know, I, mean, I, I have, thought it was a little much, but yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Yeah, but I, I, I see it a little differently. Like I got what they were trying to do, and maybe it was, mm -hmm. it was more than they intended on it. I don't think she intended on bleeding that much. Uh, meanwhile, Anna J missed the table. Yeah, in mm -hmm. our chat room. Uh, yeah, that was. Uh, in the chat room just that mentioned was, it. That, that was. Gruesome, <laughs> that was more. That was worse than the blood. It really was. Although I think Willow had held her up, so she didn't hit. Didn't hit completely hard. Well, thank so God. There's that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff coming up next week. I'm looking forward to it. More AEW. Uh, I believe uh, the Bucks are in action and a whole lot more stuff. You know, they, they are at a, a very important time in, in that company's lifespan. TV negotiation year. Seems like the optics have shifted in their favor for the time being with WWE and all the drama they're having. We'll see what happens. It's going to be a wild year. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be right back after this on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live. Final few minutes of the show here. A lot of moving parts, man. This was a lot of fun. We had Dave Meltzer on at the beginning of the show. We discussed AEW. Royal Rumble's coming up, and nobody's talking about it. We're two weeks away from the Rumble. Now, next week, we're going to spend more time on this, but this is the... This is the like the closest we've ever been to the show where I'm not hearing people speculating to the extent that they always do as to who's going to win the Royal Rumble. I think that there's a lot of other stuff, moving parts here, happening with WWE, and that's been the big story here. But, I mean, the only guarantee I see is that Cody's coming back at the Rumble with all the the, the vignettes that they're putting. Not vignettes, but the, the, the clips that they're putting of Cody. Uh, Cody would be... To me, he would be the right pick. But they could do something crazy. What if The Rock wins? Somebody posted on Twitter that they were reporting that there's a possibility Stone Cold Steve Austin's going to win. I, I, whoever this person is has to be out of their mind. I can tell you Steve Austin is not winning the Rumble. <laughs> I think that's the most bonkers one. Uh, I think you have more of a chance Vince McMahon showing up in the Rumble than Steve Austin winning the Rumble. Uh, but that's another story, right? Maybe Vince shows up and does something. I, I don't think that's a good idea. But the big story here will be who wins the Rumble and how do you get that title off of Roman? Do you get it off of Roman at, at WrestleMania? Do you get the title off of him beforehand? That Elimination Chamber match is going to be a part in this too. Very interesting stuff. And then WrestleMania, and then you're back in the WrestleMania season. This is the hottest, you know, time period for professional wrestling and covering pro wrestling. Everything is changing right now. Everything is changing. You know what isn't changing? I'll be back next week with Wrestling Observer Live. Talking everything else that happened in the world of professional wrestling. And we're done. We're out of here. We'll see you all next time. See you all later.